Hello and welcome to another MI How To video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's How To, our special guest is John Jensen from SMC. He's going to show us how to remove condensed water that gets trapped in factory compressed air and lower the dew point with these components as well. Am I right, John? That's right, Tom. Okay, but first tell us why this is something that we need when we're working with compressed air. What's the reason? Removing water from airlines will help preserve the cycle life of valves, cylinders, and sensitive pressure sensors. If you don't, it can cause corrosion, rust and pipe scale, which can break loose to block or stick to airways, that can cause pressure drop and loss in machine performance. Plus, it can affect the quality of your product. And we know that adds up to repairing, replacing equipment, and you don't want that because you're losing money. But before we get started, we have to put on our PPE. Now, you've already no, got, got yours mine. on with the side shields over there. You're good to go. I'm going to put mine on as well. Remember, whatever the job calls for, make sure that you are wearing the proper PPE. Now, I'm good to go. Where do you want to start, John? Well, let's start here. Okay. This AMG unit is a point-of-use water separator, which uses a special resin filter that separates condensed water by trapping water droplets at a 99% removal rate. Right. The sight glass will indicate how full it's gotten with the removed water, and mm -hmm. you can see when the element needs replacing. So let's get that water out of a facility line. So we filled this lubricator unit with water to act as the condensed water. Okay. So go ahead and squeeze the blow gun to confirm that water is passing through this airline. You sure I can do this right go here? Go right ahead. Okay. Oh yeah, you can see that on my hand right there. Yeah, it, that, there's a lot of water in there. But we're, right. gonna, we're gonna take that water out. Right, okay. so what we're going to do is reroute this airline through the AMG water separator. And now you can go ahead and try it again, and right. you'll see after a second or two that the water will be removed. You're getting rid of the residual water in the line there. And there you are. Oh yeah. Now we're back to dry air. And we did that with minimal loss of airflow or pressure. Well that's awesome, right. now that's fantastic. So the trapped water is gone, but what about lowering the dew point, John? Well to do that we need an air dryer like the one right here. Mm -hmm. As a best practice, you want to dry compressed air to a dew point that's 20 degrees lower than the facility's lowest expected ambient temperature. Okay, now being a former weatherman, Okay, I was never a weatherman. That's because I always confuse dew point and humidity. Now, if it's a dry day, it's because the dew point's low, but not the humidity. Did I get that right? That's right. It's yes! the water vapor we're talking about here. Okay. So when you dry the air, you're removing the water vapor. Production facilities that require large volumes of dry compressed air can use this IDFB refrigerated dryer. It will lower the dew point to around 37 degrees Fahrenheit, and it uses environmentally friendly refrigerant, R134A. And that actually gives you that 20 degree cushion that you mentioned, correct? Right, okay, and, yeah. and refrigerated drying is generally quite cost effective. So here's how it lowers the dew point. The basic working principle is that humid air coming from the compressor will enter the IDFB dryer and be cooled as the humid air passes through the heat exchanger. During the cooling process, water vapor will condense into liquid water and be removed automatically with an auto drain separator. Mm -hmm. Once the water is separated, the dried air is reheated using the heat exchanger to reduce the relative humidity and to avoid condensation on the outside of the air piping. Okay, but wait a minute now. What if I don't have the option of the refrigerated dryer? What, what do I do then? Well, then you can use a point of use dryer like this IDG membrane unit here. So these are made up of a bundle of hollow fiber membranes that are permeable to water vapor, but not to compressed air. So this one works by putting the humid air into the inlet port so that the water vapor permeates the outer walls of the membrane fibers due to the pressure differential between the moisture inside and outside of the fibers. The moisture which permeates through the fibers is discharged through this purge port here. The dry air exiting the out port will have a dew point of 5 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Okay, and you can actually see in there the water, correct? You, you can see yes. as that, that comes out? Yeah, you can see contaminants. The water vapor would exit here. Would end, exit there. And that's going to clear the 20 degrees that you're looking for. Exactly. And depending on the combination of membrane and purge rate, these IDG units can be configured to provide dew points as low as minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, that'll keep your ice cream cold. Exactly. And for applications that require reduced moisture content and dew point, the IDG IDG membrane dryer will provide just the volume of air needed without the expense of drying air down to the required dew point throughout the entire facility. Okay, <clears throat> now this is good stuff, but how long can we use one of these dryers before it needs to be replaced? Is it going to last a while? The expected lifespan of an IGG unit is about two years. You would replace it when this dew point indicator changes color. Well, that takes the guesswork out of it, and it's nice when you're actually pinched for time. Definitely, and both of these are modular units that can mm -hmm. be combined with SMC's line of filter regulators for point-of-use machine installation. 
Well, John, thank you so much. That was good stuff. Great information today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping right. by. Thank you. That was John Jensen. He is with SMC. If you have any questions, contact your Motion Industries branch. They'll be able to help you out. And as you saw, we had our PPE on for the entire demonstration. Safety is always priority number one. Priority number two, go to mihowto.com and watch more videos like this. We'll see you next time.